All right. Welcome, everyone. Um, today I will talk about reproducible builds uh, and uh, estate over content delivery network. Uh, essentially, it's an update on the uh, on previous talks um, about uh, reproducible builds within AGL um, and what next steps are going on right now uh, in upstream Yocto and within Automotive Grade Linux. I'm Jan Simon Müller. I'm the release manager and I'm also doing the continuous integration and automated testing within AGL and I'm on the Yocto project board for IGL. So today I will give a quick overview about reproducible builds to explain what it is. Uh, I will um, show how it's done within Yocto, uh, within the Yocto project and AGL. Um, I'll show you how you can use the estate, um, how the uh, one of the newer uh, features, the hash equivalent server works. Uh, what is now being done to um, improve the uh, speeds by uh, using a content delivering network for the estate and an outlook how everything um, will fit together then in the end. So reproducible builds. Um, what does that mean? So reproducible builds mean that from the same sources and the same configuration, we will get the exact same binary today, tomorrow, on my PC, on your PC. That's the goal. And uh, in other words, the build system needs to uh, be deterministic and produce a deterministic output. So um, why is that not always the case? Well, here is one example uh, why two builds might not be the same. Oops. Does it want to play? No. Oh, yeah, here. So one example is here um, if the binary has, for example, timestamps in it. that will change between today and tomorrow, right? Which means the binary will have a different date in it, which means it's not identical. Yeah. So that is one example. Build IDs are a common example that will make it different every time you build. There could be folders, folder names from the, uh, during the build or commit IDs um, think of it, uh, the commit ID might, uh, uh, you just change the documentation, right? The actual application binary should be exactly the same. No, we embed a build, uh, a commit ID. Yeah. Of course that helps during development, right? But later on during the distribution, this hurts. So better don't do that. Use your release version and um, encode that. Um, for compilers, languages, tools, so in C, uh, GCC, CLang, um, there are solutions to deal with the built in build ID with the debug symbol path and so on. 
so this can be dealt with with compiler arguments already. So that's under control. Uh, for Go and Rust, that is still in progress. That's not fully solved yet. Some of those uh, have a unique ID for each binary, which is mm, right a problem. Um, some of them encode path or custom folders per binary and things like that. So, um, yeah, not not fully baked, at least in regards of reproducible builds. Remember, we want exactly the same binary output, right? There's a project, reproduciblebuilds.org, which uh, is the home for all efforts around this. The Octo project is not alone there. Most distributions take part in there, and it's a collaborative project. The Octo project, and especially Open Embedded Core, the foundation of um, the Octo project, is fully reproducible. Yeah. Out of the, I think, 3,000 packages, uh, I think it's one or two. Um, that um, still need to be fixed. What is true for OE core, so for the core layer, is not true for uh, additional layers yet. Yeah? And in AGL, we are working on our layers. The uh, meta AGL is fully reproducible. Um, Meta AGL devil has more dependencies, and those dependencies um, still need work. So, since Yocto Project 4.0, reproducible builds are turned on by default. So, we do not have to turn it on um, ourselves. We do set um, timestamps for source date epoch and for the uh, uh, root file system. Um, that's what we set on top. Now, why is this um, beneficial? Well, you can then rebuild like your release image at a later point in time. Also, um, in other talks, previous talks, you have heard from things like SPDX, right? And SPDX tracks the binary. Yeah. If your binary is different every time, you basically have to produce a new SPDX document for that binary, right? If you produce the same binary, you have your, um, you have your SPDX information already. Also, um, reproducible builds increase the build speed, obviously, right? If we have the same binaries, uh, we can use them out of the cache and Fully reproducible builds also um, increase um, the support for offline builds, um, as it allows as it allows us to pull down all the resources up front and then uh, have a reliable way to do offline builds. Here's a quick slide about the build workflow. Uh, of uh, BitBake. Essentially, we need a few host tools. We have our sources. We have, um, we then produce first the native tools. And with those, 
and the sources and the metadata, we produce the target packages and from there we produce the target image. And you see we have here a set of hashes that identify those steps. <laughs> and in Yocto we can basically um, track these, well, forward, but also backward, essentially. To use S-State, um, there are two things you can do. Um, A, regarding the sources, you can um, turn on BB generate mirror tables during your build and then your download folder can be um, copied to a web server and that location can then end up in pre-mirrors and that will uh, speed up the uh, uh, everything regarding fetching sources. The S-state directory is now a binary cache. So this is um, not only compiled files, but um, this is a cache for multiple uh, binary um, artifacts, binary build artifacts. And that can be reused. So essentially this S state here, you can also put on a web server and then there is state mirrors that you can set. That's exactly what we do in AGL. Uh, we have our source mirror, we have our state mirror, and reproducible builds will help you to improve your build times because, well, we have those binary artifacts already, right? There's a newer component, and that is called the hash surf. Now, um, we do track um, the changes in the recipes, and um, essentially any change in a recipe will enforce a rebuild. Hey, yes, that's what we want, right? We build everything from source and um, that will then trigger a rebuild of any depending um, artifact as well. Now, let's assume we just changed a typo somewhere, not in the code, so it doesn't change anything in the binary, so it could be in, in the documentation this should not change the actual application binary, right? Or the library. Still, up to now, we would enforce a complete rebuild of anything de that depends on our package, right? Um, but we can detect that the binary is already that the hash of the binary artifact is already known, already present, right? Remember, we have here, we do a lot of hashing and we know that, oh, wait a second, this binary we did actually produce before. So what we can do is we can say we, we know this already, so this hash of the binary is equivalent to the one that happened before, right? So we can say this is equivalent. And that then means, um, here's an example. So let's say we do rebuild liby here. Well, usually this would then trigger a rebuild of your big app, right? With hash equivalency and 
kind of just a documentation change, which doesn't end up in the binary, we can now detect the equivalence and say, wait a minute, um, the new hash of liby is essentially equivalent to the previous one, so we don't need to rebuild. We can short circuit and save a lot of build time here. And we can query big up from the cache now. So that's a new development, which is now in uh, upstream Yocto. Um, we started to use that in AGL as well. We have a hash equivalent server running and are using that actively now. So to summarize that, reproducible builds are good for build performance. They are good for maintainability and they go very well together with a local bit bake uh, with a local cache for BitBank. So here's another piece of the puzzle, right? We have the hash equivalent server. So we can say, wait a minute, we, ha we have this already. We did build this already. Go look at this. So that means we will do more queries to our estate server. And what's happening upstream in Yocto is that the Yocto project S state is now available through a content delivery network. Um, that's restricted to all files that are smaller than 64 megabytes. But the good news is that this is already 99 dot something percent of the artifact cache. So essentially all Yocto files um, are available through a content delivery network. So the effect is that the downloads will be faster if you use this as your estate mirror. Now, one step after the other, now we have the artifacts. We scaled out the artifacts. Um, the crucial piece is then the hash equivalent server. So next step, um, we need to scale our hash equivalency server. In upstream Yocto, the hash surf um, is running on this uh, host and port. But this is a single, single server instance, right? So this is basically uh, a single point of failure and kind of, um, yeah, it, it reaches its, it, its limits essentially. So lesson learned and those patches are being merged into upstream Yocto um, last week and in being improved now. Um, they are extending the hash server so they can now run multiple processes uh, over load balancer with a database backend and so on. So that's the next piece of the puzzle. Um, essentially, we are um, gearing up for creating a binary distro that is one project that is <coughs> being worked on in upstream Yocto now. Um, that work is uh, um, being sponsored by the Sovereign Tech Fund. Um, it's a German fund. Um, and this work is ongoing just now. Um, Automotive Red Linux will follow based on, well, when this code lands in the release, uh, in the long-term support release of Yocto. At the moment, we are also uh, setting up uh, the same bits in the CDN for our estate uh, to speed up delivering the binary artifacts. Um, we have set up in the same way, an hash equiv server, 
there's a read-only port um, and a read-only port for a PR surf, which is needed for a binary distro. So we are um, um, following that um, set up in the same way. Here are some references. Um, the uh, announcement for the uh, CDN setup. Um, there are, uh, yes, uh, last week there was the Yogto project submit um, of, um, the fall Yogto summit, and I linked two talks that deal with hash equivalency and with estate. Okay. Any questions? Okay. Thank you for joining and uh, have a nice rest of the conference.